As I said, there are a lot of studies out there and estimates of um, livestock impact on greenhouse gas emissions uh, range from uh, around 8.7% to 18%, depending on the kind of studies you look at. Um, and that actually makes a difference in terms of the impact from, say, transport, whether um, meat production is, uh, you know, has a bigger impact than, um, than, than transport. Um, in addition, if you break down the impact from uh, meat production, uh, you, you also realize in some of these studies that um, some of that impact concerns essentially non-meat non products. We can see that the broad trend is that certainly livestock and particularly meat production and beef are producing um, quite high levels of emissions. I mean, if you look at lots of studies, there will be a range of data. The general level shows that things need to be done. And I think the question you're raising about businesses measuring their own impact is a very important one. And this is probably where the industry perhaps could do more and step up, because if the big emphasis for mitigation is going to be on efficiency savings and getting much uh, more um, sophisticated approaches to having uh, lower emissions, then you've got to have good measurements. The healthiest uh, diet uh, extracts two-thirds of the foods in the diet from plant sources and one-third from animal sources. Uh, and we've known for a long time that you need to eat a little bit of everything, not too much of any one thing. Uh, that's really critical. Politically, we're ignoring the really important point, which, this, which is that this situation is only occurring because the human population is too great. When the human population passed six billion, we did all the calculations and decided that if every person in the earth, on the earth wanted to live at the standard of energy expenditure that we enjoy in Europe, six billion was about the limit that the planet could sustain. Now the planet is seven and a quarter billion people and rising. So politically, unless we regulate the total human global population, we will always be running behind the curve in trying to maintain sustainability. Unfortunately, all our, all our farm animals aren't living happily in, um, in, in fields. Um, many of them are indoors in large sheds. They're not eating a, a natural diet. They um, have been bred to grow uh, unnaturally fast. They're fed on protein and uh, corn that's shipped around the world. And often the production of that um, is impacting on the environment and on, on climate change. So the way that we're producing animals now is completely um, unsustainable. So as part of the shift towards eating less meat, we want to see and would allow if, 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 if we and the demand um, in, in, in the world were, were reduced, that we could ensure more animals are kept more humanely. And the real advantage of that is you get much better quality meat. And let's remember, you know, meat, uh, many people really enjoy it. What we're saying is eat a bit less and put some of that money you save into better quality meat. Meat that's been produced from animals that have had a better quality of life. And there's also some evidence that pasture-fed, for example, animals, actually the meat has a better nutritional and healthier profile too. So there's a real win-win there. Yes, it is entirely possible to get most, if not all, of our nutritional needs from non-meat sources. I will admit, in certain instances, yes, meat provides perhaps the best way of absorbing some nutrients. Iron, for instance, vitamin B12, those kind of nutrients are much more readily absorbable when it comes, comes from meat. But with a balanced diet, across a period of time, it's entirely possible to get all the nutrients that we need. The industrialization of uh, animal production, I think to a degree with me here, 
um, is, is on a different scale altogether. This is a very dangerous situation we've got into where animal production now is truly, I believe, threatening the world. And in fact, in the developing countries, people are suffering already uh, from uh, global warming. And in fact, you could argue it's happening here with farmers also suffering. So in amongst, you know, as part of the supply chain as well. So, yeah, in my opinion, uh, the, the best way forward is the plant kingdom. And, and plants, because they are so adaptable to now, thanks to uh, new uh, innovation, to being made into substitutes, which you can't tell the difference between meat and dairy. This has got to be the way forward because that has got to be the most efficient and the cleanest and the easiest way of producing meat in quotations.